Congratulations, uh, Governor Palacios, uh, on your election. What, what's your reflection moments after you've just been sworn in? What, what is my... How are you feeling, feeling right now? I'm feeling good. A little bit exhausted since, because since yesterday and, and last night, midnight, we had our uh, midnight swearing in and, and, and of course all that. But other than that, I'm good. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, I was able to finish my speech. There was quite a couple of different versions on it, but I kind of decided to just go soft. Uh, but you know, the hard facts are going to start coming out in the next few days or a few weeks, as you, as you know. Uh, Transition is not quite over yet. Uh, we're still looking at uh, data, information, particularly in the, the area of uh, our fiscal uh, uh, well being, uh, as well as you know, the, the projects that, that we're obviously there's a lot, quite a, a few of projects that are still in the in the hopper, so to speak, or in pipeline that hasn't been as in and, and that goes to uh, Roland and Tinian and Saipan as well. So uh, we wanna we wanna really work on, on some of this as well as you know uh, I know that uh, you know different different agencies have been asking for meetings and uh, we'll, we'll be working hard to sit down with them and discuss some of the issues that they want to bring, bring to the floor, uh, concerns and even opportunities. Uh, I was talking to the, to the folks at GRM and, uh, and they're, they're indicating that there are possibly some challenges that we will be facing uh, with uh, some of the programs that have been rolled out and have not been uh, complied with uh, to some extent. But uh, but those kind of challenges, I think, opportunities will open up, and, and we just got to work on our credibility and work on our trust with with uh, our our folks that are going to be uh, doing the job. But you know, for for the transition team uh, from finance, we still need a lot more time to to go into some of these records and take a look at what happened, uh, whether it's ARPA funding or whether it's CARES Act or whether it's uh, general fund. Uh, I know that um, uh, the picture uh, is not rosy, and, and, but we want to be transparent about that. We, we need to tell the people where we're at and what it is that we need to do going forward. And uh, speaking of uh, that picture, uh, what is the state of the office you're inheriting? We're hearing there's not even furniture left for you. Okay. So what, what are you yeah. experiencing so far? Well, uh, to be honest with you, that's the least of my problem. But at the same time, it's maybe the least of my problem, but it's so petty. If, you know, a lot of the furnaces have been taken out of the governor's office downstairs and even the staff offices and even the, I believe even equipments are not there. I don't know whether they've been transferred to other agencies or branches of government. Uh, but we'll, we'll make do with what we have. Uh, but that, that is a, a really strange way of transitioning from one administration to the next. I've never heard that happening. Uh, but it is what it is, and that's where we're at. Uh, I talked to the AG and procurement, I'm going to track those things down, and if they were illegally or uh, transferred outside of regulations and the way it should be, then, then uh, we'll uh, take a look at what needs to get done. To me, at this point in time, that's the least of the problem. I can, I can work at a, um, a folding table and a chair and, and 
get things done. And, and you know, I, I tell you, uh, uh, I will, we will uh, tell our cabinets and then our the head of, of agencies that uh, we're going to be very through, very spark. We don't, we will not uh, to the to the extent. Um, practical we will not be buying new furniture. So the furniture stores are not going to be uh, having a. But you know that's where we're at. I'm wondering if it's, it's just my office or other offices in the, in the different departments. No? So yeah, and, and you know we 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 have to have a team that uh, where there's procurement that's going to go and account for all the assets, whether it's DPS or or um, or any other departments. We have to account for them. And we know where we're we're at and where we're starting. And we, we all heard your speech, it was live streamed for anywhere in the world to hear uh, and that statement that you made with regards to the AG collecting some of the funds that might have been uh, unrightfully given to some businesses. You said you're going to collect those. That, that's a big, heavy statement. What, what do you mean exactly? And well, there might be some businesses I, I, and individuals concerned when they hear that. Absolutely. You know, uh, that, that should be a concern because the way the boost program uh, was rolled up, I, 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 I only mentioned Boost. The way Boost was rolled up, I think we all know, we all saw it unfolded. Uh, there was no guidelines. There was no compliant guidance to be complied with. We don't even know how it was. There's no notes or records of how these things were were provided to, uh, these opportunities provided to some and to some or not. And if you really look at Seriously, seriously, I've talked to small businesses that struggle through all uh, the pandemic, and, and uh, but they stayed open to service, provide the services that's needed by the community, stores, restaurants, uh, folks up there that are doing the, the screening up at the airport. Uh, where are those companies? There's there's a big restaurant, and, you know, I I, I don't believe really I need to. To say which restaurant it is, uh, which establishments it is in TDM, but um, this this restaurant has been there for a couple of decades and have provided the services, uh, whether it's after Sunomore or after uh, YouTube, uh, it was destroyed, but they still managed to stay open and cook for people. And, Provide people with uh, with with services that's needed, and even throughout the pandemic, where did this? I was looking. I was amazed. I was shocked by by the lack of assistance that they were provided. These are people that are, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're struggling, and I'm pretty sure they're going to use some of those fundings. But um, there are companies that were just. Almost fly by night. Uh, so, are those the instrument? Uh, the AG is going to take a look at it. I have to talk to him about it. And if he needs uh, records, we will open up the books for him and take a look at it with a with human process uh, were violated, whether uh, the ARPA uh, regulations and guidelines were violated. It. You know, the last thing we want is that those who are evaluated, whether it's, if it's especially if it's federal, federally funded program, uh, the last thing we want to see is that the Commonwealth is on a, a federal recovery, you know, uh, whether it's uh, taking away our opportunities to access any more federal funds or that they would demand that we pay back. And uh, Governor, just going back to your inauguration, which happened just moments ago, uh, was Governor Torres invited? And have you heard from the governor since uh, you've taken a good before? Yeah, we, we, we invited him. He didn't show up today. Yeah. We invited him. You know, we gave him the courtesy. I, in the beginning, I noted that he was going to come, but, but we let us today, we, we gave him the invitation. And what was your yeah. last conversation on Monday? Uh, 
God's one who makes you. He just came over, you know, I guess he was still like, signing documents uh, as he walks out in court. Thursday, he was signing a lot of documents. I don't know what those documents were. Uh, whether it's expenditures, last minute expenditures and payments, or uh, whether he signed off on those proposed pardons uh, as he walked out the door. I'm not sure, but he was in New York, is um, You know, I, I don't, I really don't personally take things uh, uh, personal. Personally, I, I, I try to be as, as civil and as respectful to people as I can, but that's not, that's not, those are not my assets. Those are not decisions I have to make. You know, there are regulations and rules and regulations. But, uh, you know, we had a casual conversation, uh, but I, I didn't invite to an answer. And as of this morning, at least uh, from what I can tell, there hasn't been any official list of your cabinet, the people who will be your closest advisors on the ground working in various departments. So what's the update uh, that you can give to the public when it comes to the I already started uh, looking at uh, individuals that we've been receiving uh, resumes of folks that are interested in certain positions. Uh, and uh, starting today, probably this afternoon, or maybe tomorrow morning, no? uh, we'll sit down with the team and print those things out and take a look at uh, where people fit. And, and uh, uh, people who have some interest in certain, certain positions, and that those are the decisions that we have to make. And we expect to uh, be making some announcements maybe later this week. Uh, or a next week, maybe two next week. And what are you looking for in your cabinet? And uh, are we going to see some familiar faces from? Yeah, the probably. Room? You know, uh, may, may not be in the, in, in in the positions that we ex people expect them to be. But we'll take a look at their credentials. We'll take a look at their backgrounds and experience, and we'll also take a lot, a lot of closer look. Uh, and um, their records, whether there's been any problems uh, during their tenure in, 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 different, office, in the different offices that they've been uh, employed in. There's, there's a, you know, we will, we will probably come up with a matrix on how to approve it, uh, how we want to get these things done. And who would be best fit for what? And so, who's helping you review all of the applications? Uh, of that process? Right now, we just uh, it's it's sent to to the, the, the various chain chairmen, and they're they're being consolidated. Uh, and uh, some of them directly send it on my email, or or but but we we're, we're getting we're getting there. And uh, could you comment on uh, something that Lieutenant Governor uh, Afton said with regards to DOD and the military and him being, of course, the first veteran to hold the Lieutenant Governorship? Um, but what is your approach to the military? Because I recall even at the NMC Town Hall, he said that was one of, that was going to be one of the main economic driving forces. So what is the future of military development here in the Sino? Well, you know, uh, I know that the Department of Defense is getting ready to roll up in the CJMT again the redraft and we gotta take a look at it, how how consistent it, it is. So yeah, uh, I know they're very keen. Uh, you know, uh, we, we gotta take a look at uh, how uh, we can fulfill our obligations uh, when we sign a covenant under that, and we get to talk to. to Indo PACCOM and GRIM, Zone Region Morales, and, and see what kind of projects and, and what kind of uh, uh, where where the Department of Defense is going in the Pacific, in this part of the world. And obviously the geopolitical situations today is different from what it was five years, ten years ago. Right? And 
as Americans, we also have uh, an obligation to uh, military facilities and military needs. And so those, those discussions have to be frank and have to be realistic. And I will, I will also uh, insist also with the Department of Defense in a very civil or very courteous and very respectful manner saying, hey, you know, what kind of benefits or what, what, what kind of concessions uh, can you give to the Commonwealth to jumpstart its economy? You know, is it, you know, uh, R&Rs for your, for your uh, vessels, and Navy, or, and it's a whole slew of projects that, that we've done that, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we've also got to be very honest sign the covenant and then we've, uh, we've agreed to uh, to uh, help in the defense of, of the country and, and, and whatever that may be and right now the geopolitical world is like you're, you're shifting as we speak and, and so uh, we might be called upon to to have a bigger role in that whatever that may be you know, Palau was, for example, very uh, resistant in terms of military and government defense uh, 20 years ago, probably. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that we also need to do is make sure that our environment, no matter what the activities are, we have to really look, for, look and forecast what the impacts are going to be in our environment and our, our historic uh, Treasures, whatever that may be, and, and Guam is a, is a really good example of that right now. So we're learning it as we speak. You know, we're we're looking at how they are addressing the the, uh, the NEPA process. Uh, what are you know some of the hot topics at the same time? And we have to be very mindful that um, the Department of Defense, the military, does provide benefits to the communities. Where, where they're at. Uh, it's just uh, up to the communities also to engage and see what kind of engagement that's going to be. And it cannot always have to be, uh, uh, what do you call it, when you're, when you're, um, not, when you're, when you're always disagreeing with them, uh, but it's something that we need to sit down and, and, and uh, discuss with mutual respect. Hopefully, discuss it on the table. But, you know, uh, you look at Guam and you look at you know, uh, the drivers, tourism industry, this is this is, uh, Guam and, and Hawaii are, uh, tourism is also our, our main driver. But these two other jurisdictions have the military. So, whenever our tourism, their tourism, uh, have a, a, you know, impact or impacts uh, outside of the control. The military economy is always there to kind of just um, uh, hold, them, hold them up. So it's very, we really look at even Hawaii and um, and Guam. Right. Uh, I'm going to just more questions in order of the for time. Uh, I wanted to talk about party, uh, party identity moving forward. Your independence on paper, you're also a long time Republicans, uh, you told me when you launched your campaign that the Republican Party has lost its way. So are you still, do you still have Republican values? Is, is, that, gonna, is that part of your leadership? Yeah, you know, uh, and, and, but actually, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't make that the, the party affiliation now at, at this point in time of my career. Uh, as a, a, something that's been set in stone, and I'm gonna, you know, uh, especially in island communities, you, you although you affiliate yourself with, with with political parties, there's always the, the, the part of you that said, you know, it doesn't matter what party you're in, you just gotta start, you know, uh, serving your community uh, honestly with integrity. If, if you look at some of the folks that are running independent in the House or the Senate, 
that continuously are very strong in the communities and they get re-elected time and time again. Uh, I've been independent. And uh, sure, uh, I've, I've, been in a, I've been in the Republican Party for quite a long time here. It's been a process to vet individuals running the party also. And I'm not sure that, that there's even a, uh, a vetting process that they do anymore. And I think right now, I think that's what um, what they're doing is just like, you know, just the central committee is like sit in a room and, and decide who they're going to make run. And that's not, that's not good for the party. So, you know, having said that, you see it, you see it twice uh, when Heinz ran against uh, Balta was an independent. Uh, he was the, the independent, uh, and, and of course, the common and the new party came in and and, and won. Uh, and the same thing is happening now. I mean, so to me, party affiliation no longer is no longer a, a, a must do for me in my political career. Neither is it for Dave, and neither is it a lot of a lot of. Folks that won in the house, right, are independent candidates. And I, you know, I, I, I told them, I said, you know, you need to be very, very, um, I'm going to be very honest with you. This is, not a, this is not a party. This is just the A team. This is just a team. And um, when you are running, People no longer really look at party affiliation. That half, or maybe more than half of, of your strength is going to come from you as an individual in your own capacity, in your own effort, and the other part is, is the team. All right, then, uh, Governor, just a last question here. Is uh, your comment to uh, the people watching as you prepare to lead them into the next four years? We're going to meet. People's understanding, um, people's patience, because I, I, I'm telling you, um, what we're finding out is just uh, the tip of the iceberg. But, um, you know, we will, I, I wish I could say it's going to be a soft landing on some of these, but we will work hard. I, I will. Make this commitment, Dave, and I will work hard. We'll be transparent so that people know what's going on, and uh, we're engage with the media to take a look at it. We're going to really open the books for the people to see where we're at and, and to come up with a plan. There are some of those projects that are programs that are uh, in existence. We're going to continue them, and when, to the large extent, we will ensure. Our partners, whether it's, it's the military or the federal government, that we will get back in compliance with some of these uh, shortcomings that, that we've uh, been, uh, projects that we've ignored for a long time. Uh, but uh, we will rebuild our credibility, we will rebuild confidence in, in your government. And, and pretty, you know, I'm about a year or two, but there's going to be some, there's going to be some very hard, unpopular decisions, but necessary decisions that we have to make to uh, carry us to the next year. All right, thank you very much.